Here at Centenary College in Hackettstown, New Jersey, many of the sports programs have found success over the last quarter century. Within the halls of the John M. Reeves Student Recreation Center lies memories engraved in trophies, banners, and pictures. One particular section dedicates itself to the accomplishments of the Centenary Basketball Program, and in that section, it devotes a shelf commemorating the school's first men's basketball team, which began play in 1989 under the leadership of Centenary Athletic Director Catello Cardi Gemma, who served as the team's head coach. Founded in 1867, Centenary College served as a co-educational preparatory school until 1910, when it became a prep school for women. In 1988, Centenary became a co-ed institution once again. One of the first orders of business of integrating men back into the school was to begin adding men's sports to the athletic programs. In 1987, two years before the men's basketball team would take the court, Gemma was named Centenary's head coach. The very next year, he was named the school's athletic director. Cardi was very low-keyed, except in the basketball world, uh, in the gymnasium. Uh, he was very well respected by all the students and the parents and the community. And uh, he was just a wonderful man and uh, everybody loved him. Uh, he had a great name, uh, he had a great reputation, and uh, I never heard anybody speak badly about him. He helped out in almost any way possible. Uh, very good man, well respected, not only in the school but in the whole community. Um, just he knew how to handle kids and deal with kids. He, he didn't raise his voice, he didn't scream, he different, didn't yell, and uh, that's what made him as successful as he was. But he was the first athletic director when the institution went co-ed. Um, he's actually in our athletic hall of fame and um, we inducted him in our first class. Um, and at that time when we inducted him, he had passed away shortly before that. Before arriving to Centenary, Gemma was already known as a basketball genius in the North New Jersey area. For nearly 30 years, Gemma served as a history teacher and a basketball coach at Glen Rock High School. As a coach, his teams won numerous league championships, and his 1961 boys basketball squad won the state championship with a 26-1 record. For his efforts, Gemma was named on several occasions Coach of the Year by the Bergen Record and the Ridgewood News. I came to Glen Rock in 1965. Uh, Cardi was the basketball coach then. He was the uh, history teacher. He was the head of the department. At uh, one time, he became dean of students. Uh, Glen Rock was one of the smaller schools, but yet we were still able to compete. And he won championships in all that league. And I came to Glen Rock in 1969. And so then in 1970, 71, I was Cardi's JV coach. And uh, I, I got to know Cardi very, very well. And then I became the eventual head coach when Cardi resigned that position. and. Uh, he, he kind of, uh, he gave me the reins and he said, Harry, you know what you're doing, go do it, and I'm not going to interfere at all. And, and that was his words of advice, just do whatever you have to do. After stepping down as head coach of the boys basketball team in the mid-70s, Gemma returned to the sport in 1980, coaching girls basketball. There were two people before him, and uh, the person before him just resigned, and uh, Cardi's daughter was on the team, so he figured it would be a good opportunity for him to coach his daughter. Well, his daughter Allison was on his early teams, and Allison was an all-county player and a Hall of Fame player, uh, so he enjoyed that. The difference between boys and girls coaching is somewhat different, uh, and he enjoyed that very much. Gemma retired from Glen Rock in 1987 and soon after took on the challenge of starting Centenary's men's basketball team from the ground up. I think he retired the year before mm -hmm. me. So I heard many rumors that he was moving upstate New York. Uh, I, I mean, he told me he was going to. He was trying to find a place with a house and a lake. Then I heard that he went to Centenary College and he was the athletic director and the basketball coach. Mm -hmm. I was very happy for him. Basketball was the first men's sport to be added to Centenary's athletic department. So in order to make men's sports at Centenary a successful venture, Gemma had to understand the significance of his position. That first squad in 1989 was comprised of a mix of recruits and walk-ons. Several members that made up that first squad were Fred Mangione, Drew Green, and Centenary's future all-time leading scorer, Kevin Boswell. With the team finally in place, Gemma and his 11 players were set to begin writing the first chapter for Centenary men's basketball. However, 
things were not as simple as many would think for the men. For starters, they were denied the chance to play on their home court. Due to the confined spaces of the Centenary Gym, the court was not deemed regulation size. Instead, Centenary had to settle playing their home games at Hackettstown High School. We had a gym. Um, it was much smaller than the gym that you all know today that you see here on campus. Um, it was um, a little bit short, shorter than regulation. Uh, it was enclosed by a set of stairs and also um, a staging area. It used to be a um, multi-purpose room for uh, dances. Uh, it had um, a glass uh, skylight, so there was some natural light in the room, which on some occasions made it difficult to play because depending on where the sun was, you had natural light coming in and ricocheting off the floor. Um, it didn't have a lot of bleachers and seating area. Um, I know that they played at the high school because there was certainly a lot more seating capacity there. That would be one thing that I would think would be a reason. Um, the court was obviously larger and more regulation. And so if they played there for a couple years, I know as I got here as a freshman, um, we were certainly playing our games here in the, in the gym that we had prior to the gym that, that we have now. So, Another factor was finding a team to play. At the time, the men were not yet recognized by the NCAA so Centenary had to settle for whatever competition they could find. What they found were community colleges, junior colleges, fellow independent schools, or if they were lucky, actual NCAA programs. Despite these setbacks, it didn't take long for the men to capture their first win. On December 9, 1989, the Centenary men recorded their first win by defeating Sussex County Community College 80 to 77. At season's end, the first men's team completed a record of seven and 14. Boswell led the team with 55 steals and 74 assists, while Drew Green led in rebounds for Centenary with 159. What makes it even more incredible was that the team was made up of mostly freshmen. Due to this, Gemma was able to add more talent on top of his already talented team for the following year. In their second season, Centenary improved to a 14-14 record. In 1994, Gemma stepped down from both his positions and finally called it a career. Gemma finished his time at Centenary with a 43-75 record. To this day, Kevin Boswell's 2,026 career points still stand as a school record. Apart from what his players did on the court, many of his first-year players found success in later life. Currently, Fred Mangione and Drew Green work as the Chief Operating Officer and the Senior Account Manager, respectively, for the NBA's Brooklyn Nets. If you were to come by now and see how the men's basketball team has been doing, you would not be disappointed. In 2015, the team made it all the way to the Colonial States Athletic Conference semifinals and hosted a conference quarterfinal game where they defeated Immaculata University 72-63. As Centenary Athletics continue their upwards progress for the future, one cannot help but wonder where Centenary Athletics would be today without the vision and wisdom of its forefather, Cardi Gemma who set out on an odyssey in 1989 with 11 men in hopes of starting a proud basketball tradition at Centenary. If he were here still today and had the chance to take in the sights, maybe he himself would be surprised to see how far his vision has come.